Oh, you're there. Let me suppose you're looking for a video that will answer all your interesting questions about the Philippine national artists and the Philippine national living treasures. Are you? Well, this video is perfect for you. Now, you may ask, who are the people granted to be one of this Filipino national artist? First on the list is of course my hometown's honor, Mr. Carlos Botong Francisco. Carlos Modesto Botong Villaluz Francisco was a Filipino muralist from Angola Rizal. Francisco was the most distinguished practitioner of mural painting for many decades and best known for his historical pieces. Francisco first gained renown in the pre-World War II period for the post-impressionist styles that established the modernist movement in the Philippines. His series of 14 paintings from his farmhouse on the outskirts of Madrid, the so-called Black Painting, contains images of violence, despair, evil, and longing. They are the pessimistic expressions of an aging, deaf artist who was delicious with society and struggling with his own sanity. Next to him is the first ever national artist, Fernando Amorzolo Cueto. Fernando Amorzolo was the Philippines' first national artist and is officially recognized as the grand old man of the Philippine art. Fernando Amorzolo painted and sketched more than 10,000 pieces over his lifetime using his natural and backlighting techniques. His most known works are the Dalagang Filipina, Landscape of his Filipino homeland, portraits, and World War II war scenes. Amorzolo is best known for his illuminated landscapes, which often portray traditional Filipino customs, cultures, fiestas, and occupations. His pastoral works presented an image of sense of nationhood in counterpoint to American colonial rule, and were important to the formation of Filipino national identity. Lastly, and definitely not the least, Mr. Ryan Kayabyab. Raimundo Cipriano Pujante Kayabyab, known professionally as Ryan Kayabyab, is a Filipino musician, composer, and conductor, regarded as one of the pillars and icons of the original Filipino music. He was the executive and artistic director for several years for the Devong San Miguel Foundation for the Performing Arts. His works range from commissioned full-length ballet, theater musicals, choral pieces, a mass set to unaccompanied chorus and orchestral pieces, to commercial recordings of popular music, film scores, and television specials. Well, I became one of his fans when I heard of his few songs like... <laughs> I know you're enjoying the songs, you can listen to them after. But for now, let's focus on the Gababa itself. I'm sure you've heard about her. One of the Philippines' living treasure, Wang Od. Wang Od is an embodiment of the Asian art of tattooing. She ought to be a Gamaba recipient because she has survived centuries of foreign influences, yet continued to foster the traditional way of Filipino tattoo art, further preserving a significant feature in the Philippine culture and identity. Apo Wang Od is not only the oldest tattoo artist in the world, she was also the first woman to become a tattoo artist in her tribe known as Butbut -But Chai. She is 103 years old now, still living an ink legacy in the skin of many locals and tourists. 
She started tattooing when she was 15 years old. Next to Wang Od is Lang Dulay. Lang Dulay was a Filipino traditional weaver who was a recipient of the National Living Treasures Award. She is credited with preserving her people's tradition of weaving tinalak, a dyed fabric made from refined abaca fiber. Lang Dulay started weaving when she was 12 years old. Now she is passing on all her techniques to her granddaughters and students. Lang Dulay shares that her mother, Luan Senik, taught her to weave. Last for our Gamaba is none other than Federico Caballero. Federico Caballero was confirmed the Gawad sa Manilikha ng Bayan Award in 2000 for his expertise in Sugidanon, the epics of Central Panay. He learned to value the epics at an early age as he and his siblings would listen to their great-great-grandmother as he chants while lulling them to sleep in a hammock. He is known for his work on the documentation of the oral literature, particularly the Ten Epics. These epics are rendered in an extinct language related to Kinaraya.